Overlord for Figma is here and it's exactly what you would expect from a battle axe tool. Just make a selection, click the button, and your art is instantly transferred to After Effects. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the new Overlord Figma plugin and how to use all of its features. And the best part is, if you've purchased an Overlord 2 license since it was released, you get this update at no extra cost. Just update the desktop app, then update the Adobe extension. If you haven't purchased Overlord 2 yet, you can do that now at battleaxe.co slash overlord, and you'll get everything Overlord has to offer currently, plus any new features added for one year from your license purchase date. After that year, you can continue to use Overlord for as long as you want. You'll just need to renew your license to get any feature updates beyond that point. Now, before we dive into Overlord for Figma, I just wanna quickly point out that more and more job applications are asking motion designers to be proficient in Figma. And if you're like me, you've probably been putting off learning Figma because it's just so stinking hard to get art from Figma into After Effects. But sooner or later, a client or designer is going to hand you a Figma file and you need to be prepared for that. Fortunately, as an Adobe user, it's very easy to pick up and that's where I come in. I just released my latest course, Figma for Motion Designers, specifically for you. In just over two hours, I'll get you completely up to speed with how to navigate and design in Figma. We'll even cover some of its unique features like auto layout and components that just don't exist in Illustrator or Photoshop. And to celebrate the release, for the month of November, you can save 20% off the full price, plus get access to a 35-minute bonus lesson where I get into more advanced use cases of components, variants, and even a little bit of interactive prototyping. So don't put off learning Figma any longer. Click the link in the description to get those special release perks, and I'll see you in class. Now, Overlord for Figma works almost exactly the same way as it does inside of Illustrator, and in some ways is even more capable. So to open up Overlord in Figma, just search the community right here. Go to plugins and widgets and search for Overlord, and you should find it, there it is, from Battle Axe. You click on that and then say run, and that is going to open up the plugin. Now, if you've already purchased Overlord, this is going to automatically link to After Effects as long as they're both running and you have the desktop app running as well. But like I said, if for some reason you're restricted from using community plugins, you can still install it manually through the desktop app and then you can open it up by right clicking, going to plugins, development, and then saying import plugin from manifest. And then depending if you're using a Windows or Mac machine, go to one of these two addresses and you'll find manifest.json, open that up and now it will be accessible in your plugins. So again, just right click, go to plugins, development, and then Overlord will show up in that list. And this will run locally on your machine independently of the plugin community. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the community version since it's already there and it looks nice. So everything works just fine. Now let's take a look at what we have accessible here in Overlord for Figma. Well, first of all, we have this new After Effects comp from frame. So whichever frame you have selected, if you click on this button, it's going to generate a comp in After Effects with the same dimensions. Just make sure that you're working at the frame rate that you wanna be working at before you start actually animating. I'm going to drop that down to 30. And then the other button we have here is new frame from After Effects comp. So if I were to make a new comp in After Effects that was say 1920 by 1080, and then I went back to Figma and I clicked that button, it's going to generate a new frame in my Figma document with those same dimensions. All right, let's undo that and get back to our frame and take a look at the transfer action. So we have three main transfer types here, push selection, split layers, and single layer. And two of these should look familiar to you if you're already using Overlord 2. First of all, we have push selection. So I'm gonna grab the entire frame and click that button. It will rebuild it inside of After Effects according to the grouping hierarchy that we have set up in Figma. So we have a Figma layer that has everything that belongs in that group, we have an overlord layer that has everything in that group, and then we have a background rectangle. That wasn't part of any group, so it was transferred to its own layer. Otherwise, things are going to be merged. So if we take a look at the hierarchy of this Figma frame, we have another frame for the Figma logo inside of that. Figma button, handles, bounding box, lots of different frames within frames here. The topmost frame is what determined what would become a single layer here in After Effects. And again, because that background was its own independent rectangle, that came through as its own individual shape layer. And this is exactly how it behaves inside of Illustrator as well. Groups become layers. Frames or groups inside of Figma, they transfer as layers with the push selection button. One thing to note about that though is layers that don't transfer as shape layers. So we have text and an image in this frame. If I just make another comp from that frame and then I transfer this entire thing, it's going to again transfer everything including the image and even preserve the text editability, but it's not gonna be able to merge everything like you would expect with just vector shapes. It's gonna do as much as it can, otherwise it's going to behave a lot like the split layer transfer and just split everything up into its own layers with guide and group layers wherever it can. 
But as you can see, this is a really great representation of what I had over here in Figma. It was able to bring all of the settings that I had, opacity, blend modes, parametric shapes, even this square right here. If I take a look at the properties panel and click on the rectangle right here, here's the shape properties. This is actually a parametric After Effects rectangle with roundness controls, everything that you would expect from a parametric shape. That's something Illustrator can't do. It doesn't give us access to that data, so path has come in as expanded shapes. But Figma allows us to have that extra data that we need to keep things parametric as much as possible. And this goes for not just rectangles, but also stars, polygons. It keeps track of points, corner roundness, radiuses, as much information as Figma gives us, we're able to preserve with an Overlord transfer. And yes, images will transfer from Figma to After Effects, and it does it really successfully. As long as you have your file saved in After Effects, it has a place on your hard drive, and you take a look at the system section, and this is enabled. You have a relative image folder path, and you can customize where that is. It's going to automatically rasterize and save those images from Figma, save them to that folder, and import them into After Effects. So if I go to this Overlord folder, I've got images, and there's the image. It's automatically imported it, and it's rasterized it at two times scale. So I have a lot of resolution to work with if I need to scale this up at all when I'm animating it or just resizing the comp. So images will transfer from Figma to After Effects, no problem. So let's take a look at the next transfer option. Let's go back to this comp right here. I'll make another blank comp in After Effects just so we can see the difference. And let's take a look at the next option, split layers. This is another transfer method that we already had from Illustrator to After Effects, but now we have it here in Figma. What it's going to do is take everything in your selection and transfer it as individual layers. So regardless of the hierarchy that you had in Figma, each and every single object is going to be split into its own layers. And along with all of those layers, we also have these Overlord group layers layers that are guide layers. They won't render, but they're sized to their corresponding hierarchy elements inside of Figma. So we have a Figma frame here. You see the bounding box matches the size of everything within it, and everything inside of it is parented to it. But we also have one for the Figma button. We even have one for the Figma logo. So every layer of hierarchy that we had in Figma is preserved here with these group layers. And you can very easily pre-compose any of these. So if you didn't need access to all those individual levels of that button, Button, maybe just the Figma button, I want that and everything underneath it to be in a single pre-comp, that's exactly what the pre-comp button in the Overlord extension is for. So just go to your group section, have that selected and click pre-comp, and it's going to pre-compose all of those layers so that you can have a little bit cleaner of a timeline down here. And you can do that for anything. I'll grab this one over here, which is my Overlord entire group, and I'll pre-comp that, and that just moves all of those layers into a single pre-comp. Now I've actually undoed back before I transferred and we take a look at this checkbox right here, pre-comp frames. This is going to do that pre-comping for me automatically. So any frames that we have in this document, in my selection, so basically everything here is using frames. When I transfer it with that split selection, it's going to move all of those frames into their individual pre-comps automatically for me. So we see that we've got a Figma pre-comp. If I go inside of that, there's a Figma button pre-comp. Inside of that, I've got the Figma logo pre-comp and the guide layers are generated with each one of those. So let's say I wanted access to the Figma logo within this one. Well, that's exactly what the decomp button is for. So just select the comp that you wanna decompose, click on decomp, and it's going to break that out into its individual layers, again, preserving that group control guide layer and give you access to those layers. So with the pre-comp and decomp button, you can very easily customize which layers are visible and which ones can be stacked away into a pre-comp. I also like to have these pre-comps continuously rasterized. You see that that switch is enabled to preserve the vector goodness that we have inside of each of these. So I can scale it up and still have clean, crisp graphics. And this is now a preference. If you right-click in the Overlord extension in After Effects, you can turn Collapse Transform pre-comps on or off right there. There are some other preferences in here that are really worth knowing about, like being able to detect parametric shapes and scaling art to the comp width, which we're gonna take a look at in just a second. But that brings me to this button right here, Edit button visibility. This is a new feature which allows you to customize which buttons are visible. It'll open up the desktop app. It's under the hosts section. And if you click on edit button visibility, you can choose which buttons are visible. Let me actually pull up Figma here and we'll see this version of Overlord. If I customize this a little bit and maybe just turn off the new Figma frame button and click save, we're going to immediately see those changes take place. So you can customize exactly what you want to see 
in whichever app you're using Overlord in and save it and it will be updated automatically for you so you can work with as much or as little functionality as you want inside of Overlord. But going back to After Effects, I wanna point out that split layers is going to be your best bet for getting a one-to-one -one representation of what you see inside of Figma in After Effects. Since it's not trying to merge things and it's just bringing in every single object as its own layer, it's much more likely that you're going to get exactly what you're trying to get using the split transfer button. So that's what I recommend using. That being said, we also added another button, a different transfer method, the single layer button. So with this selected, let's uh, just go over to this comp here. This is another one with just some vectors, very simple. I'll make a new comp from this and then we'll transfer it using the single layer button. So when I transfer that over, it's going to merge absolutely everything that it can into one layer. And that's exactly what happened here. So if I were to grab you know, this shape here and this shape specifically, and then transfer that over, it brings that selection in merged into one single layer. As long as you're just transferring vectors, this should work no problem. Again, if you transfer text or images, those are gonna be split out into their own layers. But this is a feature that was requested by a lot of you who didn't want to worry about grouping things or keeping them organized in a specific way. If you wanted to get things into After Effects as a single layer, that's exactly what this button is for and it's also available in Illustrator. So you asked for it, Adam listened, you're welcome. Now, I wanna jump back into Figma and take a look at this comp over here. It's a little bit more complicated. This is using a mobile frame preset from here in Figma. And if you take a look at the resolution, it's tiny. It's only 393 by 852. And this is an iPhone 16 frame size. Now, the reason why this is so small is because of the way that phones render things on their screens. And that's not really helpful for us motion designers when we're working on HD videos that need to have a little bit more resolution to them, especially with raster graphics that we need to be able to zoom in on. So what I'm gonna do is first just make a new comp from this frame that matches. So here we have in After Effects, 393 by 852, very small. And I'm going to transfer it using the split layers and pre-comp frames checkbox enabled. So with the entire thing selected, I'll send that over. It's gonna take a little bit because there are a couple of images in here. It's got a lot that it has to sort out, but once it gets going, you'll see that it is still extremely fast. And we have a very accurate representation here in After Effects of what we had in Figma. The issue is the resolution. If I zoom in here, you can see just how pixelated that picture is and the graphics that are vector are being rasterized at such a small resolution that they just are super pixelated. So what can we do here? Well, first of all, there is a built-in script to After Effects. If you go up to File, Scripts, and down it's down in my list off my screen recording, but it's called Scale Composition. This is bundled with After Effects. You have it installed already, and what it allows you to do is scale this up and everything inside of this comp, including the pre-comps, it goes recursively through everything and scales it all up based on a scale factor, comp width, or comp height. So if I needed this to be specifically 1080 tall, I could type in that number, I'll just say 1080 and say scale, and just like that, it scaled everything up and it all looks a little bit higher resolution now. So that's one way that you could do this. Or if I undo, again, back to before I transferred this art, I'm just going to scale up this composition by locking the aspect ratio and then multiplying the width or the height by two. So I'm going to upscale this by two, doubling the resolution, click OK, and then right click in the After Effects extension and make sure that scale art to comp width is checked. And now if I transfer my artwork, Overlord is going to detect that the comp in After Effects does not match the dimensions of the frame in Figma that I have selected, and it's going to automatically scale everything up to fit that new comp width. So if you know that you need to work at a higher resolution, you can go ahead and scale up your comp before you transfer it as long as you have that preference enabled and Overlord will automatically scale the art to match. And if we take a look a little bit closer, you'll notice that even things like the drop shadow has been transferred. So if I go into this and press E, you'll see that there's a couple of drop shadows on this window right here, as well as right here, if I press E, that brings up the drop shadows. Those are transferred from Figma's effects into After Effects. They're not going to be 100% accurate, but they're very, very close, and you don't have to add them after the fact. You can just modify them to fit, which is just a huge time saver, and that's what's so amazing about this Figma support. If you've tried to transfer things from Figma to After Effects in the past, even with AEUX, which Adam created, you know that it was just such a difficult task, and it was never anywhere near this accurate, and from here, it's just going to get better. 
And that's just about it. You can read all about this update and more at battleaxe.co slash overlord. Overlord for Figma has been in the works for a very long time and Adam has been working his butt off to get it to you. Make sure you send some love his way and join the Battle Axe Discord to thank him yourself. And don't forget, if you've been putting off learning Figma, I've got your back. Figma for Motion Designers is your fast track to getting up to speed in Figma and you can get it for 20% off for the rest of November. Head to jakeinmotion.com to get it now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy using Overlord inside of Figma, and I'll see you in the next one.